today's video is about CFI's three month review. I want to talk to you all about the things that I have recognized within three months. I don't have but one con. Everything else is a pro. So let's get that out of the way. <laughs> see me looking down I'm not being disconnected I'm only just reading what I have written for you guys um, first thing is if I started um, CFI in April my husband and I we came together um, a lot of you I'm sorry if you see me rocking I'm, I'm being loaded in Pennsylvania right now but um, my husband and I came to CFI as a team in April I got on the truck with my trainer he went on his own solo and drove the entire three weeks that I was out with my trainer. My training experience was the bomb.com. Um, and a lot of you all have already been watching and been following me. I won't go into great detail about my training experience here, but um, just to say it was phenomenal. And I appreciate CFI, I appreciate Austin because I had already had a terrible training experience before I got here. So um, that meant the world to me. Um, I'm very, very grateful for my training experience here. We came in April, I trained in May, and then I got on the truck with Doug in June. So this review, is going to be from July to September. That's three months. It is September now. You guys probably won't see this video until October, but I'm giving you three months from the time that I was on the truck with Doug to the time that um, I got on the truck by myself. So first things first, let's talk about getting home, okay? There's never been a time that I needed to go home and CFI didn't provide. CFI took every step, every measure to make sure that I got home on the time that I needed to be there. My husband and I would always make plans to do things with the children, do things um, with our grandchildren, and we've gone to the beach. Um, we've always uh, set time, like the pool party, there's a video about that. We'll link it here. But um, in my, my daughter's birthday, we always set the time with CFI and they got us home at the time that we needed to be there. Honestly, I feel like if you need home time and you don't get it, it's because you're under a load and you have not ran that truck to, your, to match your hours to get your load where it needs to be. I have heard one or two people saying that they couldn't get home. I believe that if you're under a load at the time that you want to go home, it's up to you to run your truck. Don't be stopping everywhere, sightseeing, stopping at Lowe's, buying drinks, using the bathroom, all this different stuff. Get to where you need to be so that you can match CFI trying to help you. Help them help you. <laughs> um, Second thing is, every time I spoke to dispatch, no matter what I needed to talk to them about, they were very reasonable about whatever it was I was talking to them about. Um, when I was on the truck with my trainer, he told me 
you're gonna talk to my dispatcher. I was like, why? Why am I talking to your dispatcher, you know? And he was like, well, she's your dispatcher now because you're on this truck, you're running this truck. I'm just in the passenger seat, I'm your finisher. So you will need to talk to dispatch to talk about the time that you have to run or do whatever it is you need to do. So from day one, I caught a very good vibe with dispatch. Um, I got on the truck with Douglas and we had one guy who was there first and he was phenomenal. We went in, we met him, we sat down at the table and we met him. We talked to him about our desires and the things that we were looking forward to doing as far as how many miles we need. We don't. We, we only need to be home once a month. Um, we'll go wherever you want us to go. We'll drive at night, we'll drive, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. And these are the things that we, the conversations that we had with him. And he reasoned with us to a point that um, anytime we needed to call him or anytime that we needed to talk to him about anything, he was right there, always available. If we ever left a message for us to be reached for him to call us back, he always called back. Then he switched out, somebody else came in. In my mind, I'm thinking, oh gosh, you know, we, we, we got a new person and I don't know how it's gonna be with the new person, but tell you the truth, the new person was just as great as the last. So uh, I think CFI prides themselves in communication. It's one of the things that they never failed me in. Um, third thing is I go into the phone calls. Every time I ever called, if I leave a message, they call back. If I ever called and uh, left a call back number for them to call me back, they would always call back. I've never talked to them and they were short with me or they ever felt like, or I ever felt like I was getting on their nerves. I could have a thousand questions to ask and I would say, okay, I got this many questions. So this is the first thing. And every question was always addressed properly. If I felt like I still needed a little more understanding on an issue, they would always make sure that I was satisfied before I hung the phone up. And they would always say, okay, are you sure? You know, you got it. And if you don't, then feel free to call back. So I really love that about CFI. Okay, the next thing, the time to get up to our loads. We have much time to pick the load up. We have much time to drop the load off. My first load comes going from North Carolina to Arkansas. My second load was coming from Arkansas to Pennsylvania. I'm on my third load. Now that I'm leaving, I'm, I'm at Pennsylvania getting loaded and I'm on my way to Georgia. But leaving Arkansas, coming to Pennsylvania, I had four days to get that load here. I could have stopped at the mall. I could have went to the grocery store. I could have stopped at Lowe's. I could have slept for a whole day if I wanted to. But the truth of the matter is I wanted to get the load here so that I can get from under it and then turn around and get back under another load. The key to getting money at CFI, and everybody talk about, you know, there's no money at CFI, there's no loads at CFI, da, da, da. The loads are scarce, but that's across the United States of America. The loads are scarce, but whatever load you are on, don't take forever to drop your load. This morning, I wasn't supposed to be here until 11 o'clock. I got here at 10 o'clock. They went on and took me. Yesterday or Sunday, so today is, what's today? Today is Wednesday, I think. I'm not, yeah, today is Wednesday. So Sunday is when my load was due. Hey guys, sorry for the interruption. I actually started this video on yesterday, but told y'all I was being loaded at the time so they finished loading me and it was very quickly I got loaded in 15 minutes but I was under 30,000 pounds so um, I'm gonna try to pick up where I was leaving off at on yesterday um, that way I won't get interrupted because I'm at a truck stop so picking up 
that load that I was telling you about. It needed to have been uh, delivered on Tuesday, but I made it in on Sunday. I called CFI and I asked them if I could go ahead and drop the load at the nearest drop yard, which was um, Heartland Express. I dropped the load at the Heartland Express on Sunday. Now, mind you, I left on Friday morning. I had four days to get there. I arrived on Sunday. I dropped the load on Sunday. I would have been right back out on Monday. The load was due on Tuesday. I would have been right back out on Monday under another load. So this is how you get dispatched. This is how you get your miles. This is how much time you have to get to your loads. The next thing is accommodations. So anything that uh, we've needed, hotel rooms, um, Ubers, extra cash on your card, um, they're gonna make sure that, oh yeah, it's okay, go ahead, boom. The car is on the way. They'll tell you what kind of car it is. They'll even send it to your phone so that you won't be lost in the shuffle. They'll tell you, um, they always give you five-star hotels. Like, I know somebody who was just in the Marriott in Pennsylvania. Um, my husband and I was in the Candlewood Candle Suites. Y'all, if you saw that clip, if you saw that video, then you already know it was a very nice hotel. If not, I'll link that here. But just know that CFI goes above and beyond to make sure that your needs are met and everybody is treated equally. The next thing is <clears throat> layover pay and breakdown pay, right? And let's go ahead and add deadhead miles into that. And just like, you know, earlier in the, in the first part of the clip, I had my iPad for notes. I'm still using my iPad for notes. So uh, I'll be looking down. But yes, breakdown pay, layover pay, and deadhead miles. Let's add all of that in there together. Because a few people have commented on my video saying that CF, with CFI you do a lot of sitting. I won't say that you do a lot of sitting. Uh, the time that I've been with CFI, I may have sat a day and a half at the longest but you're getting paid for that you, okay you're getting paid it's 125 dollars a day that you are sitting and um that's layover pay breakdown pay is the same thing it used to be 75 dollars, but then it went up to 125 since we've been with the company so you get 125 dollars a day and now just think if you're out for three days that's 300 and $75 that you've made by not doing anything but waiting on a load. Um, if you're at a shipper or a receiver and they take longer than two hours, you're being paid layover pay. Same difference, $125. Um, another thing, uh, breakdown pay. Okay, $125, you're broke down no matter if you're under a load or not. Once, I think it's, now don't quote me, but I want to say it was past two hours, but I'm really not sure. Um, so I have no idea <laughs> to be exact. I haven't stayed broke down a long time, but uh, the deadhead miles. So if you are in a yard and you have an empty trailer and you need to go from um, where you are to a hundred miles, you're getting paid for those miles just like you're under a load. Your trailer is empty. You haven't done anything but picked it up. But you're getting paid the same amount that you would get paid as if you were under a load. Um, so I thought that was good. The only time that you don't get paid is when you're deadheading home or when you're bobtailing home. You don't get paid to go home. You don't get fuel to go home. Going home it's on you, which is which is understandable, right? So uh, that's that. Next thing I have written here is they don't stand over you, okay? CFI does not micromanage you. Once they give you your load, they tell you what to do. And some people have even felt like they've been thrown out. Like I heard one person say they was thrown to the wolves, you know, uh, like you go figure it out. When you are an experienced driver, you are given your truck, you are given a bag with 
everything that you need to run your business. And yeah, you pretty much have to figure it out. But it's not all that hard to figure it out when you're an experienced driver, it should come naturally. Some things are gonna just come to you. Now, the way that the EOD work in the system that um, CFI runs on is Omnitracks. A lot of people are not used to Omnitracks. So some people do need the guidance to get through the Omnitracks. Like I met a guy who, um, I walked him through the Omnitracks the whole time we were in Pennsylvania, just showing him how the Omnitracks work. Now he has three years experience driving trucks, but not um, any experience with Omnitracks. So these are the things that you will uh, maybe need a little assistance or guidance with coming on as an experienced driver with CFI. If you have three months or less, then you will get on the truck with a finisher which is a trainer, which is the same thing that I did. I got on the truck with my finisher and big ups to him. <laughs> He's my dude. When I tell you I love Austin Allen and if you are watching this, mwah, because that guy taught me, we prayed together, we cried together, we, we blessed the Lord together, we named the truck the choir truck because we sung together. So anyway, nevertheless, I had the greatest training experience in the world and um you know you will get on the truck with a finisher slash trainer once you come in and you have under three months anything over those three months then you are an experienced driver and you will go out on your truck and yeah you might have to make a couple of calls to dispatch or to your fleet manager to find out how you do this what do you do here da, 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 da. and it's okay because as i said earlier they have never rushed you off the phone. They always talk to you in length and they make sure that you get everything that you're asking about. They have the motto here, you are the captain of your ship. So the thing is, if you don't feel safe, then you don't have to drive. There is not a force dispatch, although there is a force dispatch, but it's not. So what does that mean, Tanya? In other words, you are given a load. You are expected to run that load, especially when you're a company. Now, if you are a lease operator and you are leasing the truck with them, I think you do have the option to accept or deny based on where it's going, based on you know your time to get home, based on the fuel and the mileage and all that different stuff. Okay, it's a lot that you got to put into that, but that's another video. I suggest that coming in as a company driver, that you do not turn down any loads because those loads are your, that's your income. And the more loads you take, the more loads they're gonna give you, simple as that. The more loads you get under and run, the more loads you're gonna get. So, um, you know, I, I don't know, a lot of people uh, talk about you give a little, you get a little. And I just believe that that's what it is here. And there is no big eyes and little U's. I don't believe that there is any favoritism, but I do believe that they know who run the truck. And if you run in your truck, you're gonna get the miles, period. So that that's just my, that's my personal opinion. Don't count it towards CFI, cause they didn't say that, I did. I just feel like, you know, if you are good at what you do, you are on time, sometimes early. Now, early could be a bad thing with some companies like Walmart. Walmart do not want you earlier. Walmart, if you go show up early, it's just like showing up late. So, um, some companies do want you right on time. But if you're delivering and you're on time or early, depending on who it is, then uh, I think they're taking mental notes of this and and because of the mental notes that are being taken it's like okay he's running you know pretty good he's always on time never had an accident you know staying in his own lane this that and the other okay let's you know give him a couple more loads let's trust him with this let's trust him with that or her <laughs> her <laughs> because um you know I, I just I just believe that uh, they they may be cautious and that's with any company. You're gonna be cautious with your loads, especially the ones that need to be there at a certain time. You know who's gonna get it there. So, okay, on to the next, cause I'm rattling. On to the next. Um, all of the terminals are super, super clean. I've never been in a terminal, not even a Heartland Express terminal. Um, that are that is dirty 
every one of the terminals that I have stepped foot in from the time that I've been with this company um, up until now is super clean. There is one thing I do not like. I do not like the walls and the floors in the Heartland Express terminals. <laughs> That's just me and my personal preference, but it's not because it's dirty. It's just, I think it's the color or something. I don't know, but it kind of freaks me out. It's, it's one of those things where let me get in, take my shower and get on out. But um, every CFI terminal has clean showers. Every Heartland Express has clean showers. The terminals are, um, the, the local dispatch is very friendly. Um, the terminals are clean. Everybody that I've ran into is friendly. Speaking of friendly, every time I pass a CFI truck, we do this number because we all recognize that we're family. So nobody told us to do it. Nobody told me to do it anyway. Well, well, no, Austin didn't tell me to do it, my, my finisher. He never told me to do it. But one day, um, and it was actually the first day that I was on the truck with him, he drove on the first day just to show me the ropes. And every time we passed the CFI truck, he would wave. And so I'm in the passenger seat and I asked him, I said, um, is that something you do, you know, just waving at the drivers or, you know, did CFI, you know, require that or maybe suggest that to the drivers? And he said, no, he said, I just wave at everyone that passes. I said, and they wave back at you too. He said, yeah, they've been doing that from the time that I've been driving. So I was like, okay, interesting. And I liked the feel of family. I liked the feel of oneness with this company. So I started implementing it every time I was on the highway. I don't care which way I was going or where I was at. When I saw a CFI truck, I wave and they wave right back. And there might be one or two that was not paying attention to, you know, the opposite side of the road or maybe looking straight ahead and not looking. But anybody who looked at me, anybody who gave me out of eye contact, we waved. In fact, I waved at somebody on the way into this uh, truck stop just now, which is a lot. And I know, and I'm not being biased because I work here. I'm being honest. I'm telling you the God's honest truth. Nobody told me to say these things. I have not spoken to anybody. The only video that I was asked to make was the SAP program video. I made that video because my recruiter is she specializes in SAP. Now I'm not a SAP driver, but my recruiter specializes in SAP and she told me that and uh, we were talking about, you know, good ideas for videos and that was her suggestion. So I did that for her, but um, nobody told me to make this video. I'm not benefiting. I'm not gaining anything from this video. I'm just using um, the comments below and I'm kind of feeding off of what you all are saying and um you know just kind of want to give you a new outlook because people could be reading the comments and saying oh i don't want to go there because this was said this and this was said that but the truth of the matter is when was the last time you were at cfi if you've got a negative review and um you know the industry is bad right now but i don't know i'm just one who've always looked at the glasses being half full instead of half empty that's just me but now let's get to the one con okay the one con um and it, it actually has it, nothing at all to do with cfi it has everything to do with the leasing company i applied my husband and i both applied so we both were gonna do separate trucks and and lease. And um, that was the goal before we got on these trucks. Well, before I got on this truck, we decided to check into the leasing program. And we did, and we both were denied. That's the only con. But that still has nothing to do with CFI. That is their leasing program. So what happened was uh, we applied and I've got a Lexus. I had no idea that me saying, okay, now I'm going into truck and I don't need this car anymore. I gave it back to the company, not knowing that it was gonna put it on my credit as a repo. So um, 
But the good thing is, they told us with the leasing company that we could pay down $1,000 and then reapply. Once we pay down $1,000 on that vehicle, then we would both qualify. Both of our names was on the vehicle. That is my actual only con, but at the end of the day, it's still not CFI's decision. It is the leasing company's decision. I just said that the cup is half full, right? So everything happens for a reason, it's okay. I would rather be in a red Kenworth than a white Freightliner anyway. I'm in love with this truck, y'all. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna do a truck tour. Um, I know y'all can kind of see the back right now, but I'm actually getting ready to go to Walmart in just a few minutes. This concludes my three month review for CFI. So, God bless.